Okay, we'll give everybody just, uh, just another minute here. I think there's uh, 20 or 30 ergos that are currently missing that are, that are running up here, so I want to make sure the whole family's here. So break into small groups and discuss among yourselves. <laughs> Where'd you go to high school? Were you Georgetown visitation? Oh, oh, thank you, gosh. Very good school. Yeah. Almost as good as Miss Ogden. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. Wonderful to have everybody here this afternoon. Um, a very special day, special occasion here on the Rose Hill campus. As we kick off spring weekend here at Fordham University, it's, it's a beautiful day, beautiful weather. And as, as Keith, I know, always says, it's a great day to be a Ram. So extremely happy to have everybody here to celebrate this wonderful occasion. Um, before I get started and introduce our, our new head men's basketball coach, I'm going to hand it over to our president to say a few words. Um, many of you I know are in this building for the first time. Hopefully you're enjoying this beautiful new space, beautiful new uh, building. Uh, it's wonderful to be a part of this uh, in terms of our athletics, and rightfully so. We have this man to thank for this building, but also on Wednesday we were able to dedicate this building in his honor, so rightfully so, as we continue to celebrate, honor uh, his retirement here at the en end of this school year. We're so very lucky to have the leadership. Please give your attention to the president of Fordham University, Father Joseph, Mc Joseph McShane, Society of Jesus. Thank you, Ed. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, and I want to add my words of welcome to those that uh, Ed has already offered. Uh, this is a great day for Fordham. Uh, it's a great day also for a Fordham family. Uh, the Ergo family has been connected to Fordham for decades. And uh, we're honored to, uh, to, I'm honored to have Mr. and Mrs. Ergo here this afternoon to celebrate uh, really the announcement that uh, Keith is our new basketball coach. A word or two, if I could, uh, about why I am so thrilled that Keith has accepted the offer that we presented to him earlier in the week. Uh, number one, he's a man of great character. He understands that his uh, responsibilities not only include being a great recruiter, a great game coach, but also a former of young men. In other words, he sees his job as coaching and also teaching, and walking, as our uh, Father General in Rome would say, walking with the young as they take on the world. So I'm thrilled for that. I'm also thrilled that he comes from a great pedigree, both personal pedigree and a basketball pedigree. Basketball first, he really has worked at three of the, the marquee schools in Division I basketball throughout the country, beginning with Gonzaga, not the high school he went to, uh, although he did go to a Gonzaga, a Gonzaga in Spokane, and also uh, Penn State and Happy Valley, and Villanova, which is on the main line outside of Philadelphia. Uh, I think that's where it's located, right? Somewhere south, uh, at any rate. Um, and uh, his experience at those three uh, schools and with those three programs have all prepared him to take on the position of being a, uh, a D1 coach, we like to think the D1 coach, in the capital of the world. Uh, and so we're really thrilled to have him. Uh, he also, aside from Pedigree, the, uh, the family pedigree is important to us. He knows Fordham. He knows it through and through. He learned it from his father and his mother. And that 
that will stand him in good stead as a colleague and companion in mission. Uh, he's also, as you m the players would know, he's someone who takes it upon himself to know his players and to mentor them. He's not a hands-off coach. He's someone who really lets the players know how much he cares for them, how much he cares about them, uh, that he will watch over them and watch out for them, uh, but he will also expect great things of them. In other words, he has a magic touch for bringing out of players and out of students their very best at every moment. And they're not afraid to turn to him in times of, of difficulty or challenge in their lives, professional or, or personal. Uh, and uh, for all of these reasons, I could not be more thrilled to welcome him uh, to this new position. He's been with us a year, learned a lot. He's learned how to uh, get from Westchester to the Bronx, which is, you know, a bit of a challenge. Uh, and uh, he's learned about the special spirit of the university in a deeper way than he ever learned from his dad. So Keith, welcome to Fordham. It is a joy uh, to have you as part of the family and an honor to know you as a friend. Thank you so very much, Father. Again, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for this incredible building and this beautiful day here for Fordham University and for Fordham Athletics. Um, special thanks again to our Board of Trustee members, uh, all of our Fordham community that's here, our, our, our Ramley, as we identify as, and we're so lucky and blessed to have the, the family feel in Fordham University, and it's so important. It's truly what Keith and the Ergos represent. Um, also want to thank our student athletes for being here, men's basketball, as well as our men's basketball staff. Special thanks to Coach Gately and uh, our women's basketball team for also being here. Um, not only their incredible success, but truly showing what our family and our Ramley is all about in, in the basketball community and how we support each other here at Fordham, so thank you. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge, unfortunately, a, a difficult loss uh, in our Fordham family this week. Um, I think many of you knew uh, John Toflon, uh, former uh, board of trustee here uh, for Father and, and Fordham University. Um, a courtside season ticket holder for every Fordham Rams game. Um, if you didn't know John, you probably heard him during the game just ripping into a referee and, and giving, him, giving him a tough time. Uh, John will, will be very much missed in our Fordham community, uh, a huge supporter not only just of his financial means but of his time, never missed a game. Uh, sorry to say our last conversation was probably last Thursday and he ripped into me about Villanova and Eddie, you better fix this. You better have a solution to this situation, this problem. And if you knew John, that's that's loving that he would actually rip into you. So I, we it wish him. It will take more than you to correct Villanova. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but um, John Toflon, again, our thoughts and prayers with Joan and the girls and our f and, and his family during this 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 time. But I know he'd be extremely happy and proud to know our decision. Was, uh, was Keith in terms of obviously what we're building in the special time here for Fordham basketball. On, on behalf of Fordham University, it, it's truly an honor and a privilege to, to introduce Keith as, as our newest men's basketball coach. I know it's been a whirlwind this week for a lot of us and a lot of crazy things that we've gone through, inclu including Keith and his family. Appreciate his patience and understanding of the process that we, we are, what we're doing here and what we're building here and how we don't take any of that lightly. Um, I often have represented Fordham men's basketball as being a startup company. Keith knows that and, and the staff knows that. And uh, in our entrepreneurial ways, it was important that we maintained our vision, our strategy, our approach, um, our, our build. And like any entrepreneur, there's always struggles and bumps in the roads. And um, obviously, you know, this week, we, I'm happy to say we, were, we successfully navigated that together. Keith brings a vision, a passion, a knowledge. Uh, one of his, his siblings says to me, you know, he's relentless. And he is relentless in terms of his attitude, his work ethic, his fire, his passion. It comes out in everything he does. He was a major part of, of the last 10 months and what we have been building in terms of his, his fingertips and his DNA of, of knowing how to build a program. And forget about that school in Philadelphia. We're not going to talk about them anymore. But the school in Penn State, what they built there, what Keith built there, is remarkable. Penn State is not a basketball school, has never been a basketball school. He took over a situation that was very challenging because of, of problems on the football side, and they made them a top 10 contender in the Big Ten 
conference. You know, and that, that, that truly resonated with me the entire process. It resonated with me a year ago when we hired Keith as, a, as an assistant coach. I know that mentality is what we need here at Fordham as we build our program. Um, father talks so eloquently about his Jesuit values, what it means to be here. I said this a year ago. I say it again now. We, we, we wanted a coach that truly wanted to be here. That sounds easy. As Coach Gately knows, it's not easy to find a coach that truly wants to be an institution and represent them and is not just a stepping stone or is looking to get a big paycheck and make more money, um, truly wants and understands what Fordham is all about. Uh, and that resonates in every conversation I have with Keith. Um, this is home for him. And I know he's going to be here for a long period of time. I know his family, all 120 of them will be behind every game here. Uh, and we're lucky and blessed to have them be a part of that. But truly understanding what Fordham's about and wanting to be a part of our culture and our environment here. It's, uh, it's important to me to have a partner in this process. Keith and I talk a lot about that. And he truly is that. And, and uh, the opportunity to build something special here, uh, the opportunity he's been waiting for, has earned and is so well deserved. Uh, it is truly an honor and a privilege to be a, a partnership with Keith Ergo. It's, and it's, again, truly an honor and a privilege to sit here and introduce our new head men's basketball coach. Please give it up for Keith Ergo. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be very difficult for me to just sit still. Uh, that's not something I do very well, but I'll do my best. Um, First and foremost, Father McShane, I'd like to thank you very much for allowing me to take part in this process and accepting me as, as your new basketball coach. Um, my father always said, you're the most important man in Fordham history. And uh, that was evident for what we experienced the other day, pretty special moment. So I appreciate you allowing me to sit right here next to you. I feel honored to be here. Um, President Tetlow is not here, but I had the honor of, of sitting in front of her the other day uh, her energy, her excitement um, is something I'm looking forward to getting to, uh, to experience even more. Um, along with, obviously, Coach Cole, as we like to call him. He's been a tremendous, like he said, partner the last several months. And honestly, uh, I talked to Coach Neptune uh, throughout last May, during around, right around this time, when he was asking me or, or offering me the job to come join him. I said, well, I got to meet Coach Cole first. Because knowing what I know about Fordham, uh, it's important that we have a, a marriage as far as the, the athletic director. Um, I think he's someone who understands the mission of the university, understands the Jesuit mission. He's all about the student athlete. And uh, his leadership throughout this uh, last, what, now it's 10 days, something like that, um, since everything went down last Wednesday, an incredibly stressful time, an emotional time for him as much as anybody and his leadership throughout could not have been um, more, more worthy. And, and I can't thank him enough for allowing me to sit here in this position. And I promise I won't let you down. Um, I'd like to thank the, the selection committee, starting with Don Almeida, uh, Daryl Brown, Darlene Jordan, uh, Patricio. Uh, I'm not gonna try to say your last name, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm gonna learn Spanish, I promise you. All right, we got a kid from the Dominican coming in and we want to continue to recruit, so I said I'd learn Spanish by the end of the summer. Um, John Lamello, uh, and last but not least, Jordan, uh, for taking part in the selection committee. I appreciate you guys and your patience with me. Um, next, I'd like to thank Bob DeLeo, chairman of the board, for inviting me to uh, yesterday's luncheon. Truly an honor to take part and sit amongst those special people who are all Fordham, Fordham people through and through. Um, something really special to go around to each table, meet all the Jesuits, meet all the board members, the way they took me in and invited me and were excited just as much as I am to be here. Uh, they're excited to have me, so that was a very special moment for me. And when I told my father, uh, he was pretty emotional about that. So again, thank you for allowing me to take part in such a special moment. Um, I wanna go back to just thank, obviously I got a lot of thanks, but um, I've been doing this, I've been in coaching for 20 years before I got my shot here, so um, I wanna go back to my playing days, the reason I fell in love with this game. My first coach ever uh, at Little Flower Parish, Ed Kelly, one of my uh, mother and father's best friends. 
God rest his uh, soul. Sorry. Um, my high school coach, Dick Myers, um, assistant coach at Gonzaga, and my mentor who hired me uh, as a teacher um, when I first got into coaching at Gonzaga, Bill Whitaker. Uh, he was the president of the Washington Jesuit Academy, and he let me teach middle school history <laughs> and, uh, and music while I coached at Gonzaga, which was truly an honor. Um, my college coach, Tim O'Toole, Fairfield University, now at Pitt, also a mentor and a good friend of Ron Ramon on our staffs. So uh, he allowed me to walk on at Fairfield and, and be a part of a tremendous uh, Jesuit family um, my last couple years there. Um, now to my coaching mentor, Steve Turner, Gonzaga. Um, gave me my first shot, allowed me to become the freshman coach at Gonzaga, which was an honor to come back to my alma mater. And then after one year, promoted me to an assistant on varsity for the next three years. And uh, we built a nationally recognized program. So I'm forever grateful for him for allowing me to the opportunity to experience um, something really special. It's not just about coaching. It's about getting back to where your roots are, where you play. There's something special about being a part of your alma mater and continuing to, to, to guide young men into their dreams. So I'm forever grateful for him for giving me my first shot at coaching. Um, Jay Wright, <sighs> he didn't know me. Usually, um, in order to get in the college basketball world, you gotta start right out of college. Y y the typical route is, is a graduate assistant, and then you kinda work your way up. I wasn't, uh, I was 27 year years old before I got into coaching, and he gave me a shot. And I'm forever grateful for him, because not only did he give me a shot, but he saw something in me to continue to promote me to director of ops and then assistant coach. Um, and without him, I would have never have met Coach Neptune, who I'll get to in a second, but, uh, or Coach Chambers. Um, you know, Coach Chambers and I hit it off immediately. He was the first guy I met uh, on campus at my interview at Villanova, and he said to me, because was, there was 10 candidates, and for whatever reason, I'm a shock, but I showed up in a, a suit and tie, something my parents instilled in us. And he said I was the first one to show up in a suit and tie. He gave me a hug, and little did I know at the time, he would become my best friend for the last 10 years. And we hit it off because he's the baby at 12. Um, so w we knew what big families uh, were all about. So again, um, Patrick Chambers gave me an opportunity to be an associate head coach in the Big Ten for the last eight years. I learned an incredible amount. And I think it's that experience which provides me the opportunity to understand what it's gonna take here uh, to continue to build this program. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and I thank him and his family. Um, the staff at Penn State, to go through what we've gone through in the last few years, Ross Condon, David Caparelletti, and Pat Chambers, we were the four that started the first, or first week he got the job at Penn State. We were there every second for the last 10 years, and um, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank them for all their love and support the last several months, some of which are now out of the game of basketball. Um, so I, I'm forever grateful to them and their friendship. John Saz, who was part of our training staff, he's become a best friend and mentor the last couple of months, as well as Jim Ferry. Jim Ferry and I were given the task of taking over Penn State during a really difficult time. And Jim Ferry, um, incredible mentor to me, family man, uh, taught me what it was to be a great father in this business. So that's really difficult to do. Um, so thank you. Um, last but not least, Kyle Neptune. Um, he wanted a partner in this thing like, like I want with Coach Cole. And uh, his humility allowed me to, to be almost like a co-head coach. Um, and as a result, you know, he allowed me to put my fingerprints on the program and we did this thing together. And what he's done a great job of is hiring one of what I think is one of the best staffs in America. The reason being is because they're the type of people that are completely selfless. And in order to do something really special, you need selfless people, people who honestly buy into the mission, the Jesuit mission of men and women for others. And I can attest, Father and Shane, that our staff, they care nothing but developing the entire student athlete. Um, 
They live it, they breathe it. Trey Woodall, I mean, at the age of 10, he was in a shelter just for nine months, just two blocks from the Bronx. He's back home, feels grateful for the opportunity that we've given him. Ronald Ramon, born and raised in the Bronx, All Hollows legend, he's home. He's home, you're gonna hear home a lot because this is home for us, right? Guys like Henry Lowe, Rob DePersia, Nemo Midbar, you know, Will Braden, Trey Morton. We got a number of New York roots and people who wanna be here for the right reasons. They wanna be a part of something special. And in order to do that, you gotta be completely selfless. So I'm forever grateful to them and Coach Neptune putting this staff together because we're on pace to do something really impressive. Um, to the players, I can't thank you enough for going to bat for me. This is what it's all about. It has nothing to do with coaching. Honest to God, it's all about the players. And what I can promise you here at Fordham and what we'll continue to do and why I think we did such a great job this year, we're poised to make some big jumps, is because the type of individuals that we're, we're, we're recruiting and developing here, they don't want to just be basketball players. They want to be more than that. They want to represent the name on the front of the jersey. They take pride in that Fordham brand. They never worry about the name on the back, and that's why I think we're capable to do something really special with an influx of really high-level talent. These guys coming together, the synergy they have, the belief and faith they have in this university, this program, this leadership. I'm forever grateful to you guys. And the reason I saved the best for last, and, and a lot of these times I've watched a lot of them, um, I didn't mention my family because I knew this would happen. <laughs> um, and I wanted to get through a lot of it. Uh, Mom and Dad, thank you for always instilling love and passion for anything that you do, love of family, and always understanding and, and teaching us that it's, it's really all that matters and being completely selfless. You know, sending me to a uh, Jesuit high school, not getting a scholarship, paying that tuition for a Jesuit university, and just always instilling what it meant to be a man for others. You've displayed it, men and women. You've displayed it your whole lives. You've instilled it in every one of your 10 children. Um, I'm the eighth of 10 children, nine boys and a girl, and every single one of us uh, is forever grateful. We talk about it all the time, how lucky we are to have had two people in our lives for this long. Um, just teach us what it means to just love and respect one another and always live by the golden rule, treat people the way you want to be treated and everything's going to work out in the best. So, Dad, um, obviously a 59 Fordham alum, 62 law graduate, always taught us what a Fordham man should be, even though none of his kids were capable of getting into the school. <laughs> he, he still made it clear what it meant to be a Fordham Ram. Um, to my brothers and sisters, my best friends, Devin, thank you for being here. Hi, hey, baby girl. Um, and last, but absolutely not least, my wife, Christy. It's been a long 20 years to have, um, we've known each other for 21 years. We met at college. We've been married for 16. And those of you who don't know this business, to be a coach's wife, it is really, or a coach's husband, sorry, Coach Gately, um, <laughs> it's really hard. I mean, really hard on your family. They're the toughest people that you could ever meet. My wife has sacrificed her dreams for mine. And for a while, it's been bleak of whether or not I would ever achieve it. And the first thing when we got that call, I mean, obviously we hugged, we fell to the ground, we cried for a while. Um, the sacrifices that you've made for me, for our family, they do not go unnoticed. I am forever grateful for you, your love, your support. You are an incredibly special woman and I, and I just love you to death. Thank you so much. We have uh, four children, my son Ty, Lincoln Sharp. How you got them to wear what they're wearing is amazing. Um, Cody, my my, my daughter, Samantha, and uh, nap time for my little girl, Sydney, who's the 30th, uh, the last and 30th uh, grandchild in our big family. So um, that, that's pretty
pretty much the conclusion of, of what I'd like to say. I just, last, but I just like to thank everybody for showing up tonight. Um, I'm not gonna promise anything other than uh, we're gonna develop young men that are gonna represent this university with an amazing amount of pride. Understand that it's all about cure personalis. It's not just about basketball. It's about being a tremendous human being, a tremendous father, tremendous husband, and a person who can go out in the community and understand what it means to wear that F on their chest, take pride in that, and uh, represent this university at the highest of levels. So uh, having said that, thank you all very much. I am beyond proud to be the next head men's basketball coach at Fordham University. So thank you very much. That's if that's not Fordham University, I'm I'm not really sure what is. I so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, please. It's a great day to be a Ram. <laughs> Thank you all so very much. Again, if he, if he's not Fordham University, I'm not really sure what it looks like. So, thank you so much, Keith. Um, Joe, do we want to uh, open it up? All right. We'll do questions. Anybody here who wants to talk to uh, Coach, we're going to do some photos first, so just hang around, and uh, we'll do some Q&As with him after that. Great. So we'll do some photos here. Christy, Ty, Cody, Samantha, Sydney, Ray. Let's get some great photos, please. Thank you all again for your time being here. Appreciate you all. Go Rams.
like those two that we got. I don't know. Like I actually don't. Your mic check. Should I turn on? Should I turn on? Which mic, uh, which mic, I'm, I'm four, Ryan, talk, Ryan, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we'll go back and forth first, I'm sorry. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be three, two, three. Okay, that's why. Okay, perfect. So fours here, two, three. So mic check one, two. Mic check one, two. Pat, so thanks for you, uh, for you to join us. When you hear your new head coach Keith Ergo talk about you guys in that manner during the press conference, what faith does he, uh, does that bring to you? I gotta think about how to ask that. So I think if he gives it to us first, I'll be like, we're back here at the Coach Keith Ergo press conference, Mike. Just really strong starting press conference. What were your kind of initial thoughts there? And you could just say, like, how he sounds. Oh, it's, it's going to cut to us first? Yeah, and we're going to kind of bring back the screen. Okay. So we're just going to kind of be casual about it as yeah. we welcome back players? Yeah. Both our mics are on. So when we get a fourth, just turn yeah. it on. Yeah. So yeah, we get someone at four. Do players know to come up to us? Joe. Alex. Do you just know, with David? Do you know if we're gonna like uh, do the do the players know to come to us? Um, okay, cool. So wh what's on the link right now? What? Oh yeah, check the stream. Please just pause. So Joe, do the players know to come up to us? Do the players know to come up to us? Okay. Yeah, sure, Alex, get Ed Cole. Should we get Ed? Yeah. Get our own questions for Ed. Yeah.
Testing. One, two, one, two. Uh, one, two, three, four. here at the Coach Keith Ergo press conference joined with Athletic Director Ed Cole. Ed, first off, thank you for you know taking some time with us this afternoon. Very exciting day for Fordham basketball. Uh, very exciting day, and, and first of all, thank you both for being here. I know how hard you guys work. We got finals going on <laughs> here, spring weekend. Um, this is obviously unusual timing for a coach announcement, so, so very grateful and thankful, as always, for your hard work and the commitment to Fordham Athletics. So I guess, first off, obviously, you know, you announced the decision yesterday what is just what went into that process and what made coach ergo the right fit for this team going forward yeah as we all know the timing of this was interesting right in terms of the the domino effect of, of coach Wright retirement and uh, the loss of our head coach Kyle Neptune which by the way I have not had a chance even up there to uh, publicly uh, congratulate him obviously we all know what a wonderful opportunity dream job that is for Kyle uh, in terms of, the, of going back home to Villanova for him um, you know, it, it's it was a kind of a it's kind of a roller coaster ride to be honest with you, where you want to breathe and think about the situation. Um, you know, I thought extremely highly of Keith even a year ago in terms of our recruitment of him. I've been very honest and careful. If if Pat Chambers doesn't get fired at Penn State, we right. don't ever see Keith Ergo on this campus. Right. Uh, you know, Power Five program, top five in the country. COVID hit. Pat Chambers got fired. Otherwise, we, we don't even he's not even in there. And I say that in that. Keith Ergo, besides being Ford in the last 10 months, he's, he's a tremendous candidate on last year's search, this year's search, uh, the search of 2015 uh, in terms of his pedigree, where he's been. That's why I spoke about what I did, and I really meant what I said in terms of what Penn State, building a program there that has no basketball history, and uh, he had to deal with uh, Jerry Sandusky. He had to yeah. deal with Joe Paterno's situation. So it was, a, it was kind of a tough situation to build a top-10 program. It was truly a remarkable opportunity experience. So I... Um, and then it was kind of weighing the option, all right, we, we, need, to do, we need to do a process, we need to do a search. Um, I wanted to honor what we're building here, honor our hard work and efforts. As you all know, it, there hasn't been a lot of success on the men's basketball side the last 30 years. Uh, we needed to make sure it wasn't just a short-term decision, it was a long-term right. decision. Um, and um, we interviewed uh, probably eight, 12 individuals, including Keith. Um, you know, Keith, he, he nailed it, on, I think he hit the nail on the head. It was truly a co-head co coach last year. And that's no disrespect to Kyle Neptune. So I think the, uh, the initial 10 months, the initial steps that were put into place were truly the fingerprints and DNA of Keith Ergo. Um, you know, the beautiful opportunity of obviously continuing to keep the staff in place, which we talked about, and that momentum that's been established and the continuity there. Um, Keith, Keith is the right person, the right man for the job. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Um, it, you hear about his Jesuit roots, you hear about his family values. I mean, it's just, it's, it's almost oddly how well it fits and how perfectly it fits for us right now. Before Keith Ergo was officially named the new men's um, head basketball coach, a lot of players were outspoken on Twitter, on social media, expressing how much they wanted Keith Ergo to be their next head men's basketball coach. How much did that play a factor in bringing him in to stay as the head uh, coach? And what does that mean to you when you see the players talking about how badly they wanted Keith Ergo as the head coach? Yeah, all, all the players and staff probably met with me on Friday and Saturday of, of this past weekend, uh, expressing their support for Keith. Uh, recruits and their parents expressing support of Keith um, and it, of course it means a lot in terms of of that family bond that true value of what we're doing in terms of relationship building uh, and at the core of what we are our, our goal is here in terms of developing student-athletes and the whole student-athlete experience but I'll be honest with you I had a disconnect from it and, and I don't mean to respect to our players and our kid and I love all of them I love I love what I do I love my job I love our department but it had to be the best decision for, for all of the entire department and the entire program. So I honestly had a disconnect. So it was hard emotionally uh, to not just, just, just fall in love with each kid that came into my office emotionally expressing their support of Keith. Uh, how to maintain the balance, how to separate. And even for me, me too, you all know, I'm, I've only been here uh, full time 14 months. So I feel really connected to what we've built the last 10 months as well. It's personal. Mm -hmm. But I had to separate from that, how to interview, how to really evaluate. Um, I had a lot of sleep, I'm not going to lie <laughs> to you, but um, I owed it to the university, I owed it to our department, I owed it to the basketball program, I owed it to a lot of our sports here. So he, it only continued to add to his 
his value, him being the right choice as we continue to dive into the process. And I, I stand by that a million percent, and um, I couldn't be more happier. I know it's more, more stressful for both of us, but uh, it makes it that much more confirming and confident and supportive in the process. And that continuity that we're talking about, it's something Fordham hasn't really had. And, you know, counting the interim, it's four coaches in three years. But now with the staff being intact, it looks like a lot of the players show their support. As we just talked about, how important is that going to be for Fordham basketball to have some continuity going forward? Yeah, it, it's everything, right? So um, you hit the nail on the head. It, it's, it's, been a, it's been a struggle for a long period of time. Um, and, and listen, you know, in terms of Kyle Neptune, that was always the plan, right? So it was truly always the plan in terms of him leaving and probably getting his dream job in Villanova. We just didn't want it year one. We mm-hmm. wanted it year four <laughs> or year five. So that, that was the plan. Obviously, the opportunity for him to get his dream job and us get the train rolling and build that build that momentum. So to, to be able to continue to m- maintain that, um, understand who we are and what we stand for is, is, is true. We're, we're lucky and blessed to have this opportunity. Um, but... I think I, you know it really was. I know a lot of folks upset, you know, about, about losing a coach, but it truly was the plan, and um, and we respect that in terms of our status of being a mid-major program in the A10, and, and I truly think there is also. I mean, what I say about someone that wants to be here, uh, you interview a lot of coaches who want to be a head coach. They love the business, they love the job, and you know, they, they truly don't know anything about Fordham, don't know anything about our values, don't know anything about our institution. They just want to be a basketball coach, and they'll figure it out later. And, and I respect that, and I love that. But that wasn't going to work for me. Um, you know, we don't want to hope it fits. We don't want to want them to. It's hard enough to coach. It's hard enough to recruit. It's hard enough to win games in the A10 ter- conference. To then really adapt to the city and the Bronx and Fordham and, and the unique skills. That's asking a lot of human being. So, um, so I'm really pumped that we found the, the right fit at the right time and are able to to pivot the way we are. Oh uh, yeah. Last question for you. Um, um, when you looked at what. Keith Ergo did on uh, during the press conference really saying how much he wanted to be at Fordham University and also him being here last year w- was that a big part about it, keeping the continuity from the culture and then also something who was used to Fordham University used to the campus and wanted to instill those values yeah I, mean, I think he hit the nail on the head in terms of speaking to those values right even even better than I, I can um, you know I'm speaking about his family his parents their, their, you know, obviously their, their, their alumni status you know, growing up with Fordham in his life and his family's life and, and obviously his whole Jesuit uh, education for all 10 of his, his him and his siblings. Um, you can't fake that. Uh, you know, you, you can't pretend to just say that. You can't just pretend to understand that. And I, I think, you know, throughout that process of evaluating other coaches, and I did it a year ago too, so a little bit of a silver lining of losing a coach right. after one year was was having the process done. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you, I still had a folder, and <laughs> we interviewed 25 people last year, interviewed eight this year, and, and, or 12 this year, whatever we did. And so I was, it was fresh for me in terms of what we wanted. I didn't want to stray from the overall plan. I didn't want to stray from the overall mission and, and, or panic in any way, because 16 wins is wonderful for us. I know it's been a long time since we made the quarterfinals of the A-10 tournament in 2007, 15 years ago. It's scary to say that <laughs> out loud. But, we also couldn't couldn't sell our soul or sell our plan, and luckily Keith was the perfect fit on both sides in terms of that, and uh, the right the right man to continue to lead our startup company. You heard me say that plenty of times, but also to maintain and continue continuity, which we're lucky to have. Fordham Athletic Director Ed Cole, I'm sure you're very busy, as you talked about, not getting a lot of sleep. Hopefully, you can catch up on some of that coming up. Thank you for taking the time with us. Thank, thank you both again. Good luck in your finals, and again, thank you so much for your support of our, our department. Appreciate thank you so it. much. So we'll, uh, we'll continue our coverage here, Mike, but overall I just want to kind of ask about that press conference because we talked about it. Honestly, it was emotional, right? Like I felt something watching that press conference. You could really get the sense that Keith Ergo wanted to be here, and I think some of the things that you know Cole was just talking about, how important that was in his search that Ergo wanted to be at Fordham. Yeah, I think the thing you have to love when you look at this press conference is that this is the place Keith Ergo wants to be when he talks about how much he wants to instill those Jesuit values in those players, really build a program, and really train these young men more than just win basketball games. He really has his eyes set on building a culture. That's something that we saw Kyle Neptune start in his first year, and you've got to be happy, you've got to be excited, and look forward to Keith Ergo continuing that next year. And I know one of the things that 
Ed talked about was kind of distancing himself from the players, emotional and Twitter support. But you can't help but think that had to factor in just knowing that they wanted Ergo to be there had to play a role. Yeah, and you got to love that. The players wanted Keith Ergo, and that's what they got. A very exciting year upcoming. And we're joined now by someone who might know, you know, Coach Ergo better than anyone else. It's Pat Kelly. He played for him last year and then at Penn State. Pat, thanks for taking some time with us. No doubt, no doubt. So I guess we'll get started here. Just, uh, you know, one of the things we've been talking about is how outspoken you guys were about wanting Coach Ergo on Twitter, you know, voicing your support. How important was that? And what in Coach Ergo made all of you guys wanted to continue to be this head coach? One thing, one of the things that Ergo does as a great job is as relationship with his players, you know. Um, I've known him since I was 16 years old. So personally, I was very biased. I wanted him to be <laughs> head coach. Um, but along with the guys who've known him for a year, you know, he's had conversations with them about how to improve their jump shot to personal life stuff. So we all have a great relationship with Coach, and we wanted him to continue to lead us. In the press conference, uh, Keith Thurgo talked a lot about being a co-head coach last season in many respects. How did you see that, and how instrumental was he in your success last season? He was definitely a co-head coach for us. You know, he and Neptune definitely led the way. You know, um, Neptune had the label of head coach, but I feel like they both um, led us in different ways. And um, he helped me a lot because I've known him for a long time, so mm -hmm. I have a great relationship with him. And he, he's been in my ear, you know, telling me things I can do better, things I can uh, improve on to get on the court more. And um, so I have a great relationship with him, and he's helped me a lot last season. Now, outside of Neptune, the entire staff is intact. What can that stability kind of bring with a group that was successful last year? You over-exceeded some of the expectations put on you from the outside. So what can building off that with the same kind of nucleus be for you guys next year? It's going to allow us to keep building. You know, when we have the same staff, same players, it's going to allow us to keep getting better day by day. And um, that's what we're going to keep doing. You know, this spring was a great spring for us. We've all gotten better individually. And this summer we're going to get together and improve the team. And you look at the culture that uh, head coach Kyle Neptune built last season. How do you expect Keith Ergo to keep building on top of that and then maybe also add his own coaching style to the mix as well? I don't think much is going to change. You know, we have the same mindset. You know, we're going to come out and be the best players we can be every day. Um, he's going to continue to lead us. I think some things may be different, like minor differences, but at the same time, we're our same goals, to win the A-10 championship and bring it to Rose Hill. So I believe we're going to do so. I want to ask you about that press conference because it was pretty emotional. We saw Coach Ergo really showing all of that. What were your thoughts on that in introductory press conference? It was definitely emotional. You know, I've known Coach Ergo's family for a very long time, so I've known he's, he's wanted to be a head coach for a long time too. On my Penn State visit uh, like five years ago, <laughs> you know, he mentioned he wanted yeah. to be a head coach. So. I'm beyond happy for him and his family, and his dad was a Fordham grad, so I know he's, I'm happy for him as well. So it was very, yes, it was very emotional, but I'm very excited for this opportunity for him. When you hear him talk about you guys, the players, and how this, is, this program is really about you and the work you guys have done and the confidence he has in you, what does that mean to your team going into next year? It means a lot for us, you know, just to see the excitement and, you know, how, um, I guess you could just say excitement for him, you know, having this job, he's wanted for a very long time, you know, to take over as head coach, there's going to be a lot of energy going into the next season, and I think we're going to reach a lot of the goals we set out. You've mentioned now, last question, how you've known Coach Ergo for a long time. What are some of the things you can tell those Fordham fans who, they saw him last year, you know, on the sidelines and stuff, but what is Coach Ergo's personality? What is he bringing to this team going forward? He's very enthusiastic. He's very energetic. Um, He's a great basketball coach, but also a better man. You know, I haven't, I haven't met a lot of men like him, and he's gonna, he's not gonna let you guys down. You know, he's gonna be able to bring a winning culture to this uh, university. So I'm really looking forward to see what he does. Pat Kelly, thank you for the time. Absolutely, thank, thank you. Pat. And I think, Mike, that's some of the stuff that is really kind of important. Just hearing the players and their vocal support, and we're gonna be joined by another one now, and it's Kyle Rose. So he's an interesting case because he's now been here three head coaches. So, Kyle, first off, I guess, just thank you for, you know, talking to us here this afternoon. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me for today. So I guess we'll start kind of similar stuff that we asked. Pat, you guys were very vocal about your support for Coach Ergo. What about him made you guys so confident and made you guys really fight for him to be your next head coach? So Coach Ergo is a pretty uh, genuine person. And I feel like he has a um, lot in store for us as a coach. And I could just see the way that he was building us from the, being in the assistant coach position. I could see how he was building us as men, not only players, but he was building us as men. And just helping us continue to grow and understand who we are and what we're actually capable of. And just establishing that confidence in us. Having seen now two coaching turnovers since you've been here, what about Keith Ergo coming to the head coaching position, but the rest of the staff changing? 
really gives you a sense of stability? Is there more confidence now than maybe before? Yeah, I feel like they, the rest of the assistant coaches have stepped up already with um, establish, establishing confidence in us and also just helping us understand that we are also growing as men and growing as players and like leaders as well. So we have to become more vocal and holding each other more accountable, even with the coaching chain. And when you hear Ergo and all the other assistants talk about you guys being leaders, what kind of confidence does that bring to hear? You know, they instill some trust in you, and that's something that they always talked about last year, how proud they were day in and day out of your effort. So what does that going forward with this same staff mean, and how can you build off that? So we built some type of trust last year. So now it's just it's just maintaining, keeping that same trust and building from there and just helping the upcoming players that's coming in, the freshmen and the transfer that we bring in. So that that's pretty good for us. When you guys look at next year returning a majority of the roster and having a very good season last season, finishing at 500 overall record, what are the goals you guys have out for next year with Keith Ergo and what are you guys looking to achieve? Oh, we want to be top three in the conference. That's Coach Ergo's, one of Coach Ergo's main goals from last year, and I feel like that this team is capable of doing it. We're going to find the right pieces, and we're going to also continue to have confidence in each other and trust each other, and uh, we're going to play with some type of swag this year because <laughs> of what we established last year. Now I want to ask you about that press conference, just kind of your thoughts. It's pretty emotional. You saw Coach Ergo really emptying it out. It sounds like from everything that we've been told, he wants to be at Fordham. He's embracing that culture. So what is that culture that Fordham really has and is looking to build off with Coach Ergo? So Coach Ergo just established, like, never to give up and always to give it your all no matter what situation you're in and um, just have a great attitude about things no matter what you're going through. If you're going through a tough situation, just continue to tell yourself attitude, clap your hands, and just stay positive about things. So even with the whole culture change, he was still staying positive and continuing to be the person that he always was, even though he never knew that he got the job. So I really applaud him for doing that and it made me still feel secure as a player. And show, and he also showed me that he really wanted me to come back as well. Last question for you, Kyle. When you look at uh, Keith Ergo, talk about the players in the press conference, the confidence he puts into you guys. What does that bring to you as a team, and how does that add to the excitement of next year? Oh, we're really excited as a team, and we're just going to continue to not prove other people wrong, but to prove ourselves right. Because we, we understand what we're capable of and what we're going to bring to the table. And what we're going to show these New York fans and the A-10 people next year. Kyle Rose, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you guys for having me. Yep. And that too, Mike, that is so important, the confidence that these guys have, because this is a program that has struggled. But we saw last year kind of a changing of the guard where they didn't care what Fordham was in the past. It was, it was a new identity. And so I think building off of that, it sounds like from everything we're hearing, that's exactly what this team and the roster of returning guys is going to look to do. Yeah, I think it's very unlikely there's a coaching turnover, a coaching change, and a lot of the players are looking to stay. And that's what we're seeing here at Fordham. People want to ran, wear the Fordham jersey. They want to be part of this Ramley that's being built. And I think that's something that's really exciting if you're part of this program. And it's something to really look forward to, that there are people that want to be here, want to build this program up. And that really makes the ceiling very high for this team. And we'll get Coach Ergo in a minute to kind of just talk about everything. He's with another group right now. But a guy like Kyle Rose, he wasn't recruited by this new staff. He's been a, we talked about a holdover guy from the New Bauer era. So for him to stick around, I think it says a lot about his confidence in this staff because he was with them last year. But when you lose your head coach, we know that things can turn. But he has confidence in Ergo. We've seen him tweet about it. We just heard him talk about it. That I think that has to excite you if you're a Fordham fan. Yeah, you have to be excited. We saw that uh, last year with Chuba Ohams getting re-recruited back to Fordham after the coaching chance from Jeff Neubauer to Kyle Neptune. And we see that again with Kyle Rose here. He came back last season, comes back again this season. So you've got to be excited about it. People want to play at the Rose Hill. They want to be a part of this program. And you saw that in the press conference, the way Keith Thurgo talked about Fordham wanting to build up those Jesuit values and really build a culture here, continue to build a culture. It's a really good trend for this team, and I think it's something that when you look at next year and you saw the success from last year, you have to think that this, this basketball pro program continues to grow. It brings me back to something that Ed Cole said that really stuck with me. It's that there were recruits. Like, these aren't guys who've played here. There were recruits who were calling him mothers, obviously, and, you know, advocating for Ergo. So it's clear that he had a presence in some of these top guys. It wasn't just Neptune at the top. It's the entire staff, and you give everyone credit because we always talked about how strong of a staff this was, you know, all the way through, not just at the top, but retaining that 
I think, you know, you promote here and there, but keeping that same nucleus at the coaching front with all the players, we talk about the confidence that they have instilled from this coach is it could really be a building block where we almost forget, in a sense, that there was turnover going into next year. Yeah, I think that, I'll, like, Pat Kelly came here. He said that it's going to be all the same. Everything will continue with this uh, coaching, with the culture, and you have to like that the 16-16 and 16 record, the 500 record, that's the best mark since 2015-2016. So there was progress last season, and instead of stopping that, restarting, rebuilding, it's just going to continue. And that, I think, is the best part about all of this. Everything seems like it's going to stay the same as best as it can. And with the player supporting Keith Ergo, you got to really be excited for a jump in next year from the positive season we just came out of. It, it should be noted, we talked to Pat Kelly, we talked to Kyle Rose, but other players here, Darius Quisenberry, he was a guy, Mike, some thought that he would possibly leave. He put out a statement on Twitter yesterday saying New York and Fordham is where he wants to be. We know top five in the A-10 in scoring last year. So to get him back, he was someone that was here, so he clearly is bought in. That's huge for Fordham. Yeah, you got to like that. Darius Quisenberry coming back to this team, one of the top scorers for Fordham this uh, this past season. And behind Darius Quisenberry, you guys, Antrell Charlton, Kyle Rose, who we just talked to, Pat Kelly, all those guys returning, having very good seasons last year. And it just makes it more confident that they can really make a run in this Atlantic 10 next season. A lot of turnover in the A-10, St. Bonaventure team that was very strong, that's losing some key pieces. Same with St. Louis and Davidson. Some of those top Atlantic 10 teams aren't going to have the same members, same players next season. But the Fordham Rams will have a lot of those same players moving into next year. So that alone and the new head coach of Keith Ergo and the culture and the energy he's bringing to this program, that all makes it more exciting. And you talk, we talk about it, Kyle Rose, he said top three is their goal. So that is what you're talking about. And now we're pleased to be joined with the man of the hour, head coach of Fordham basketball, Keith Ergo. Keith, how are you doing today? Uh, what's up, fellas? Uh, it's a great day to be a Marion man. <laughs> I'm fired up, uh, you know. Last uh, week or so has been a whirlwind, and now I think we're just uh, I'm ready to move on to basketball, recruiting, and uh, plan attack, and, and I think uh, our guys are fired up. Um, we just finished up our last uh, spring workout yesterday. The energy in the building was absolutely through the roof. You, you would have thought we were preparing for the, the Atlantic 10 tournament. Uh, it's a testament to our players, to our staff, Throughout this last week, obviously, everyone's been pretty emotional, um, stressful. Um, but the bond that these guys have and what they believe we're capable of, it's all that matters, man. And when you hear Coach Ergo, head coach of Fordham University, what does that feel like and what does that mean to you? It's the most, it's the most proud I've ever been in my entire life. Um, you know, I, I, I can't say enough about the university. I can't say enough about its mission. I grew up around the Jesuits. I've been in, it's been instilled in me since I was you know 13 years old, really from the beginning of my life because of my father. My father played basketball as a freshman here in 19 what I don't know 1954. Hmm. Um, I mean so to become the head coach of Fordham men's basketball with my father in the seats, it is the coolest moment of my entire life. Uh, it's great to hear that you talk so much about how proud you are to be at this. Fordham University be the head coach this is a program that's had two head coaching turnovers in the past two seasons how are you hoping to maybe provide that stability to this program carrying over that coaching staff bringing that coach over now do you think you can maybe provide that stability to this program at Fordham University uh, there's no doubt I wouldn't have taken the job if I didn't and about it's not about me it's about the players we have in this program right now and our staff right now we're poised to continue to be you know it's not just a hit one hit wonder we're trying to do something that sustains us in the top of the top of the the Atlantic 10 for the first time in its history and you can't do that without a leader like Ed Cole his leadership man he's got a great vision he's got great energy it's a marriage uh, they want basketball to be successful here and it's evident every day in the way he he uh, he works with our staff um, so it's an exciting time to be a part of this man and we talk about the players, and, you know, I'm sure you, you have social media. You've seen the support that they voiced for you. They wanted you to be their head coach. So when you see that coming off of last year and hoping to build that stability, what does that mean to you to see all the players kind of voice their support for you to be the head coach? There is nothing, in my opinion, that could be cooler and more prideful other than my father <laughs> being here than, than the players coming out on my behalf 
You know, what we're trying to do here and why I became a coach is to develop relationships that are just unique and authentic with the players because it doesn't really matter who's in the, in, in the top seat. The players have to buy in to what it means to be a Florida men's basketball player, and they have. Um, to be a coach, it's all about developing the entire student body, student, student athlete, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you, Father. Uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you for having me. Um, you know, the the goal of a coach is to have relationships with their 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 guys that um, that is unbreakable. Because if we do that and we build that trust and love, well, then everything will take care of itself on the court. They're not going to dive head first without a helmet into a water cooler for you if they don't know you love them and they know I love them and now I know they love me. And that's really what this is all about. Basketball is a byproduct of that. And honestly, that's really, you know, 60, 40 years from now when I have these guys and I'm going to their weddings and they're, you know, um, sending them cards and gifts when they have their first children. Uh, to me, that's what this is all about. And that's how you build something special. When you look forward to next year, what does a Keith Ergo-led team look like to you? The hardest playing team in the Atlantic 10, one of the hardest playing team in the, uh, in the country a team that's unified, a defensive-minded team that has the ability to get out and run and play fast. Um, you know, but you gotta get five guys loving, playing together, um, trusting one another. And uh, I think because of our, our leadership um, and our buy-in to what it takes to be successful, um, I think the enthusiasm, the energy is something like you're never gonna see before in this program. And, um, really, that's, that's, what, that's what I feel. Um, just a connected unit that's going to go into every game. We might not know the outcome, but we're going to leave every... we got to look each other in the eye in the locker room and know that we absolutely gave it up, gave everything we, co we could have had. Whether or not that equals wins or losses, we'll see. The goal is to be the best team we can be by the end of the year. And if we do that, I think we'll be successful. We talk about the players being here and what that means to you. And one of the things in the press conference that uh, Ed Cole talked about was wanting someone that wants to be here. So what is it about Fordham that makes this a desirable job for you and wanting to be the head coach? Here? Oh, man, are you kidding me? Not to ma Obviously, my father played here, yeah. and I've, I've uh, grown up around the Jesuits, but we're in New York City, baby. It is the greatest city in the world. And, uh, you know, I think if we have a successful basketball program here, it can open up so many doors for our players, for our fans, our students. The energy we created this year, we packed Rose Hill that last game against George Washington, and you got to see, you know, it was deafening in there, and, it, and them, them shooting poorly from the free throw line was a product of the energy in there, and I think if we continue that momentum, oh, God, it could be so special here, man. This environment, the student body, the engagement, Fordham University, the alumni base, it's as powerful as anywhere else in the nation. Um, if you don't want to be a part of that, man, I, can't, I, I don't. If that doesn't give you goosebumps, I, I just don't step on campus, man. We don't have time for it. You're coming off that 500 record last year. You get the win in the Atlantic 10 Championship Tournament. What do you think you can carry over from that successful season next year? You're also returning a majority of the players as well. How does that, you know, provide confidence for you next year going to uh, next season? And then. What do you think your goals are? What are you looking to achieve as that coach? Yeah, you know what? I mean, based off of last year, we learned how to win. We were in some tough battles. We fought through some adversity throughout the year with injuries and departures. And um, we did a lot of firsts. But I don't think these guys are satisfied, man. I don't think seventh place or tied for seventh is something they want. I think they're excited about taking the next step, doing something. Every one of these guys, thank you, Mr. Constantino. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, Every one of these guys came here to do something that, that's never been done before. Not just the players, but the staff included. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we got all the makings to do that, and I don't think any of these guys are going to be resting easy until it's done. We've had one of the best springs in the history of Florida basketball. Certainly one of the best springs I've ever been around a program. The commitment, the energy, the effort, the, the individual development in the last four weeks. Man, if you saw some of these kids like Abdu and Patrick Kelly, Kyle Rose, Antrell Charlton, all of them, 
they came in every day. They were like, yo, we're going to make sure we get better this summer. Last summer we came in here, man, we had to develop a culture that took some time. We had a lot of new pieces. We got to forge some, some, some identity. We don't have that. We can hit the ground running. We don't have to waste any time. Everybody knows what's due expected. We got high level incoming recruits coming in here that are going to try by fire, catch up, man. We got great leadership. And I think last year for most of the, most of the year, we had some guys, so many great guys that didn't want to step on any toes. So it was more coaches led. Now we're players led. And a players led locker room's got something special if, if you're connected. And I think that's what we got. And I know you're a busy guy, so really quickly, one last question. What is it that Fordham fans should know about Keith Thurgo, whether that's aside from basketball, hobbies, stuff like that? What is it about you that they should know? Well, they should know that I believe in everything they do here at Fordham. Uh, I believe in men and women for others. I believe in pure personalities, and that's why you come to Fordham University. Uh, it's not about basketball for me. It's about um, the next 30 to 40 years of, my, uh, of, of my, our players' lives. It's about instilling in our players that there's so much that they can take from being a Fordham Ram. Um, we want pride in the front of the jersey. We want them to go out, represent the brand with an incredible smile on their face. We want the student body to rest assured when we get out there, we're representing them and this university and this alumni base at the highest and most respectful of levels. Um, and that's what it's about. And I think if we do that, and we do it with heart and passion, trust and love, I, I believe great things are on the horizon for this program. Coach, thank you for taking the time. Congratulations and good luck. Hey, fellas. Coach, thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. So much, I appreciate it. Thank you. Go Rams. Go Rams. Yes, sir. So, Mike, obviously it's going to be an exciting time going forward. And you, you heard what er, Coach Ergo said there. And I think the number one thing for me is – he wants to be here. This is his job, and from everything from the press conference, from Ed Cole to the players, that's such an important factor to have here at Fordham. And just the energy he brings when he's talking to us. You saw it on the stage when he's with us talking now, too. You feel how much he wants this. He wants this team to do good. He wants this basketball program at this school to be one of the best in the Atlantic 10, and that's who you want as your men's head basketball coach. That's who you want in charge running things, and I couldn't be more happier, and I think I, I speak for a lot of people here at Fordham University with Keith Ergo being the new men's head basketball coach. So quickly, I'll, I'll give you the floor one final time, Mike. Just overall takeaways from this press conference and now the official Keith Ergo era of Fordham University. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like I said, there's a level in accept, uh, excitement. There's a le uh, level, level of energy that we have here that we had last year, but it's continued. It's, it doesn't stop. It's not a restart button. It's more like... Coach Heath Ergo said, hit the ground and running. And I think that's going to happen this summer. That's what's going to happen at the start of next season. Instead of trying to rebuild something, we're continuing off of last season, and we have someone in charge in Keith Ergo that's super stoked to be there, super excited to be the new men's head basketball coach, and that's who you want in charge. So a great day to be a Ram, as he says, <laughs> and it's a great day for all of us to see the new direction of the men's basketball head coach. So that's going to wrap things up for us, and certainly an exciting time, and we have to give thanks to first off Joe DeBerry, for setting this up, all the players and coaches and Ed Cole for taking some time with us, making this an enjoyable watch. But overall, that's going to do it from the press conference here. Head coach Keith Ergo, officially the head coach of the Fordham Rams. This press conference, a production of Fordham Athletics.